My grandmother was asking me one time before she passed, she'd heard about something called a depression. She said, when was it? How could my grandmother, who was born in 1900, not know when the depression was? Because she had all the food, air, water, shelter, and clothing and sleep that she needed. Right? If you're self-sufficient, you won't, you will be able to ride out climate change. In 1978, like I said, the community started thinking about how to get away from depending on government transfer dollars. In 2014, we started the process of looking at the land and we created the first land use plan to understand what do we have, where do we need to go, how are we getting there, what are the challenges. So we identified those, those criteria in our land use plan. In 2016, we completed this plan called Community Economic Development Plan and defined the self-sufficiency goals for the community in that. There are four overarching goals. My great-grandfather, Chief, he used to be known as just Chief Kanak or Chief Charlie Kanak or eventually became Chief Charlie Michelle, uh, was signatory to a document in 1910 warning uh, the then Prime Minister Laurier that if colonizations and the settler governments continued to, to use land resources as they did, it was not sustainable and something wicked this way comes, which is basically climate change. We believe that there's going to be crises brought about by climate change that are province-wide, nationally, and potentially globally. We, we summarize them changes in weather patterns, changing in water volumes, a change in loss of traditional food sources like fish and uh, ecosystem shifts, uh, drought, um, forest fires, wind events, precipitation events that are simply unheard of. And they're starting to occur with more frequency and intensity and last longer. This year, 240 steelhead are expected to return to the Thompson River. And this year, my fur community for the first time was not allowed to fish for sockeye salmon. This is the challenge for British Columbia's leadership. This is the challenge for Canadian and worldwide. Will you make the decisions today that institute harm reduction and harm reversal? because climate change will continually to grow progressively worse. So in terms of Kanaka Bar's four self-sufficiency goals, energy is critical. Um, as we prepare for the climate change environment and economies of tomorrow, we want to reduce dependency by learning to self-generate electricity. So we've now instituted a process where all of the new builds are pre-wired for solar. We built here at Kanaka Bar a six kilowatt solar system. We built at here at Kanaka Bar a four kilowatt solar system. We have wind towers will be coming next because the sun doesn't shine at night, but the wind blows. So you need to harness uh, renewable energy sources Using an organization called Community Power, we've had each one of our homes inspected from an energy efficiency perspective, and the membership are now working under supervision of a project manager and actually changing their homes. They're replacing single paned aluminum windows with double paned windows. They're putting in vapor barrier. They're putting in draft protection around the doors. They're checking the insulation and replacing or adding to the insulation on the roof. All of this to create an, a building which you can control the environment inside a little bit better. Uh, my ancestors lived in pit houses, right? They, they were dug down six feet below the ground with four foot walls. And in the inside though, you had a static climate. So as cold as it was, it was about zero or six degrees inside the pit house. And when Lytton's temperature, where I'm from, uh, hits 49 degrees Celsius, it's still six degrees inside. So you had a form of static. Today, they call it an energy efficient building or passive. Really? For 8,000 years, my ancestors lived in a hole in the ground and they're just figuring out passivity now. Most British climbers are starting to get there, but energy efficiency comes with an upfront capital cost. Pay today, 
are paid more over the long run. At Kanaka Bar, we believe that you pay today to make savings for tomorrow. We're using about $60,000 for the electricity year round here. So we can actually install incrementally enough wind, solar, and small scale hydro to take the community off the grid. The cliche is, if you don't have a destination, how do you know when you get there? The project manager we have for renovations is teaching my membership how to look after their homes. Demand side management is teaching membership how to look after their energy consumption. Some members have gone from monthly bills from $200 down to $60 by simply changing their habits. Well, one of Kanakabar's secrets, and it's not really a secret, is that we can't do it alone. Um, a lot of the, the self-sufficiency goals requires knowledge and expertise that just simply does not exist here. Kanaka Bar, like any other First Nations community or municipality, has four resource deficiencies. People, time, technology, and money. In order for me to create a resilient and sustainable community for today and tomorrow, I need knowledge transfer. Community Power offers me knowledgeable people about practical matters, but also sometimes philosophical. Neighboring communities now, they are starting to do the same kind of things that we've been doing. So uh, someone from our staff was telling me last week that um, a neighboring community a little bit north is talking about installing solar panels. Up until now, there was no talk, but they saw Kanaka take that lead they saw that the technology works at Kanaka Bar, so why wouldn't it work 15 kilometers from here? So now they're um, instituting that kind of technology in their community. So hopefully that's the ripple effect that we wanted to create, and hopefully it's, it's, it's happening. You need to find strategic partners who are, who are willing to work with you to help you achieve your goals. So setting aside the negativity, perhaps anger, perhaps resentment about what has happened with colonization, the actions of the settlers and the settler governments, and strategically finding people who share similar principles, morals, and values, and then working together in a good way. My goal is Kanaka Bar based. If it can work here at Kanaka Bar, it can work elsewhere and community power offers me the best opportunity to generate success here and hopefully other people will then go on right click and steal that story and make it work in their community.